2024 Best Supporting Actress nominee Danielle Brooks stars in Clemency. And when I say stars, I'm using that sort of with, you know, a little bit of stretching of the truth. It'd be sort of like if we were talking about Saved by the Bell. And uh, I was like, you know, Dennis Haskins stars in Saved by the Bell. I mean, he plays a large part in, oh my God, he's in Clemency. <laughs> yes, he's in Clemency. <laughs> and that's really all I want to talk about now. <laughs> Clemency is a movie starring Dennis Haskins in a role. And um, thank you for hiring him. Um, I, I didn't honestly really notice the role. And I, <laughs> I was just, I went to IMDb afterwards and about, he's not that deep in the cast. He's maybe like 12th or 11th or something like that on IMDb. I was like, Dennis Haskins? No. No, it must be different. No, it is the same Dennis Haskins. <laughs> of course, he's had many acting opportunities, but not like Clemency. He usually gets brought in on things where it's like, mm, that's part of the joke. <laughs> Here he just is in Clemency in a role, which is great. <laughs> Man, um, I wonder how long it took him to... Shake Prof uh, Principal Belding just as a as a character. Uh, anyway, oh, uh, just blew me blew me away blew the blew, blew my little child away. I mean away. I this is not even what the film is about at all. Uh, it's really d deep and emotional drama uh, about a um, a prison warden played by Alfred Woodard who uh, is coming to terms with the many executions that she has had to be a part of as having a, a death row in her facility. And um, it clearly takes a toll on her. This does have audio description. Uh, it was written by Veronica Hicks, who is like pretty fly for v Veronica I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, v shout out to Veronica Hicks on the writing here because uh, there were times where the choices that were made um, were so good. There's one scene where it holds on Woodard's face and doesn't show you what's going on and it just shows you her reaction to it. And first of all, I imagine that's probably like a I mean, that's like an Oscar moment. I don't know how Alfred Woodard didn't get nominated for this. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Neon just forgot to campaign. They were like, oh, guys, we released Clemency this year. Shit. Where's our Oscar campaign? Damn it. <laughs> we forgot to campaign that film. Ah, she would have won. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tremendous performance. And there's like a whole scene that's very harrowing. And it just... <laughs> right on her face. And it says that, too. It says it never leaves her face. And it just kind of describes and it tries to describe like, you know, the tears welling in her eyes and, you know, those like little uh, things that sort of like when you're in a, in a deep thought and your eyes kind of like flicker a little bit and it, try, it's, it, it, it tries to catch like every little thing in her face because her face is the only thing that's in the screen. And I thought it was so good. There's another scene where she's eating and she puts something on a fork and it actually tells you that she, that, uh, you know, she waits until it's, until what, what's on the fork is like mostly eaten or chewed or whatever, however you want to say it. I can't remember how it was said. Um, so like they're in the middle of eating dinner and she, you know, gets a piece of chicken or something on her fork and then puts it in her mouth and she chews. And then as she's finishing, she's mm -hmm. so what do you, um, what did you, how was your day? You know, it's like that kind of like specificity instead of just being like, they're eating and <laughs> she talks. <laughs> it was just so like, this is exactly how she's eating and this is exactly when she talks. And that attention to detail just brought me into clemency so hard. Uh, I love this. I loved this film. I, I It's first, it's a really hard watch. It's all about um, 
the death sentence and just uh just tons of emotions around it i i would not say this is pro death sentence <laughs> i don't think that's the takeaway however one of the interesting choices that they made through this amazing cast i would have nominated everybody um alfred woodard best actress richard schiff best supporting actor alvish hodge best supporting actor uh, Wendell Pierce is great for the few minutes that he's in there, but he's really not in this that much. Um, but he is, uh, he's Wendell Pierce, so he, of course he's good. Danielle Brooks, as I mentioned, she shows up um, in what you could call a supporting actress performance. It's not substantial. I didn't know how big, and Danielle Brooks doesn't have a whole lot of film roles for me to review. I'm trying to match all the current nominees to a previous film role that has audio description. I was able to match her to Clemency. It's not a huge role. It's really not, but it is a role that when she comes in, she has a great scene. And that's it, you know? Um, she basically Judd Hirsch is her way into this movie, uh, for lack of a better word. <laughs> like, Judd Hirsch was in, like, eight minutes of of The Fablemans. Uh, and, uh, and that's what this is here. I would say that's probably about the same length of time that Danielle Brooks is in Clemency. So... It's, um, yeah, I enjoyed this movie, and it's not an enjoyable subject, um, because the acting was on, was just tremendous. Uh, Alfre Woodard is somebody who continuously gets overlooked all over the place, so it's not, it's really not surprising that she got overlooked for a nomination here, because Alfre Woodard feels like the kind of actress that we just keep going, eh. <laughs> where's Angela Bassett where's Viola Davis <laughs> it's like I don't know Alfred Woodard is, should be like right there along those two like can we not talk about her is there what's going on here um, just a phenomenal actress who uh, just carries this movie just the full weight of this movie on her shoulders um, Aldous Hodge has some great moments. He plays the death row inmate that they're, uh, that we're leading up to. Is he going to get clemency? Is he not going to get clemency? Um, and, uh, you see like everything that he goes through leading up until the point. What I really loved about the, um, this film was even though it makes remarks and it suggests, um, pretty profoundly and as you start to see this guy, you're thinking, is this guy innocent? Are we about to execute an innocent man? It never defines it for you, like, with a finite amount of certainty. It never becomes about where you're about to execute an innocent man. It's simply about this is what this process is like. And for the people who do it, this is the toll that it takes on them. It also explores it through some of the other characters, too, like the um, the chaplain for the hospital, uh, I was going to say hospital, for the prison, um, whose name escapes me, but I, I know I've seen him in things. Um, uh, he had a uh, NBC pilot, Council of dads uh the council of dads council of uh, something like that and then he was also played that sort of a memorable role in Grey's Anatomy um plays a pastor here and uh, Michael Michael O'Neill there we go and um you see how it's t affecting him you see how it's affecting uh Hodge's uh, lawyer played by Richard Schiff um uh, both of those men uh, both O'Neill and Schiff, their characters remark on how they're done after this. They can't do it anymore. They're just like, we're out. And it's like, and you can feel like Woodard is like right there with them. And she has those talks with her husband and she's basically an alcoholic. <laughs> There's so many times Woodard is drunk in this movie that even though they don't fi define her alcoholism, uh, her job is basically turning her into Nicolas Cage and leaving Las Vegas. So, slowly. Um, yeah, it's, uh, 
it's really about that. It's only in through Hodge and through his sort of dynamic performance, um, we're left with the understanding of, you know, this, this is not a man who was convicted of like eating someone, you know, where you can, <laughs> where you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you're like, I don't know, it just feels like a some sort of, like, he got here some, somehow, by some way. And um, there isn't really, like, a strong sort of, like, fuck this guy, <laughs> let him burn. <laughs> that doesn't happen here. Um, you know, Doug Hutchinson doesn't come in out of nowhere to try to <laughs> get some glee. <laughs> it's a Green Mile reference, just in case you uh, don't remember Doug Hutchinson. Um... But uh, it just takes a really somber approach to the whole thing. And I thought this movie was fantastic. Um, it, yeah, yes, it has black leads. Uh, I really hope this is not a Black History Month experience. I just happened to be reviewing this during Black History Month. But um, <laughs> we got to find better ways of experiencing Black History Month than through the representation of a prisoner who's on death row. Um, I, I, there must be, so I'm not going to say happy Black History Month simply because there's several, uh, black lead characters in this. So don't use that as this. This is here because Danielle Brooks is here. I know it's February. It's just timing. I'm not, <laughs> there's no hashtag Black History Month on this. So, uh, it's a fictional thing. It's a fictional story from everything that I'm, I'm able to find about this film. So no, no true story, although it feels like it could be. And, um, it's just a, uh, just a hell of a film. So, um, Veronica Hicks's, uh, written narration here is just spot on. Uh, I just want to highlight I had the opportunity, it said the writer, and I just, so, so infrequently do I, do we know the writer. Sometimes we just know the company or the narrator. We don't always get to know the writer, and I want to champion Veronica Hicks here because this written narration is just fabulous. Um, so, watch Clemency. I'm going to give Clemency an A. Uh... I don't know how this film slipped through Oscar's fingers, but I, I'm not that surprised as a huge fan of Mass. Uh, Mass was the kind of film that just slipped through their fingers. This is a neon film, too. So um, it's also got uh, Universal attached. It's like a Universal and Neon. I think this was early Neon when they couldn't just launch a film by themselves and they needed somebody else to help them with distribution. So... Um, but uh, neon. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And um, please click that subscribe button if you haven't already. I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on X threads or Instagram at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. By the way, Dennis Haskins is in this movie. Um, <laughs> you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. To let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television shows. If you want to watch more movies about with Mr. Belding in them, uh, go check out his IMDb page because, yes, um, absolutely, I'm all about it. Give him a sitcom, give him something, literally anything, and I would watch it. If I found out Dennis Haskins had a Netflix show where he was the star, I'd watch it. Um, so, just saying. Um, absolutely. I'd watch every episode. I don't care if it's good or bad. I'd just watch it. I'd just be like, yes, this is, I can't believe this is happening. Anyway, uh, that's it. I want something else to see you guys on the other side.